Bugatti has done it. The 300 mile an hour barrier has been smashed. Racing driver legend Andy Wallace has taken a modified Chiron all the way to 304.77 miles per hour, or for you metric folks, 490 kilometers per hour. Now, it's fair to say that this car is probably a prototype for a Chiron Supersport, considering the colors look very much like the Veyron Supersport. After Koenigsegg set the bar at 284 miles an hour, it was only going to be a matter of time before someone came along and took things to the next level. So how did Bugatti do it? How did they take the restricted 261 mile an hour Chiron and lift it to this new 300 mile an hour record? Well, the first thing was lightness. Out came the passenger seat and the rear air brake slash wing and in went a whole host of monitoring devices and a nice big safety bucket seat for our man Andy. Then come the aero modifications. This Chiron is essentially a long tail spec, seeing as it's 25 centimeters longer than the standard Chiron. This more aerodynamic design means that they can reduce drag and the aerodynamic efficiency of the car increases. In a car like the Chiron, you have to balance drag versus cooling. You want to decrease drag so the car can cut through the air, but you also want to have enough surface area so the air can be gulped into the car to feed that powertrain and keep it cool. So with this car, they will have had to have got that balance spot on. My favorite modification is the tailpipes. In the place of those big central exhausts you see on the normal Chiron are these extremely cool quad pipes that are put either side of the car. They've been repositioned so that they expel the exhaust gases as far away from the rear of the car as possible. This stops them messing around with the car's aero as well as looking absolutely insane. Aerodynamic efficiency is one thing, but you need the power to match it if you're going to reach 300 miles an hour. So Bugatti took the Chiron's W16 engine and uprated it from the standard 1,479 brake horsepower to 1,578. Now, that may not seem like a massive power hike, but it was enough to get it across the line. But one of the most important factors, as has been the case with most speed records these days, has been the tyres. The Michelin Pilot Sport Cup tyres used on the normal Chiron have been reinforced, especially through the belts within the tyre, to cope with this 300 mile an hour top speed. Strengthened belts within the tyre mean that it won't cup or high spot when travelling at high speed. The tyres rotate up to 4,100 times per minute when travelling at 300 miles an hour, so they need to be able to cope with serious forces. Now, these new reinforced tyres were tested up to 318 miles an hour or 511 kilometres an hour to make sure they were good for the job. They were even x-rayed to make sure that every single micro part of the tyre was perfect so that they could reach that top speed safely. The problem isn't the instantaneous speed of 300 miles an hour. Michelin were always confident after the Koenigsegg test that their tyre could cope with that speed. It's more the heat buildup, which is dictated by how long the car takes to get to its top speed. There's no point having a car that gets to 250 really quickly and then takes an age to get to 300 because that sustained friction will build up loads of heat within the tyre and could cause a failure. So the tyres needed to be balanced so there wasn't any dodgy vibration at high speed. They needed to be strong enough to be able to keep their shape and therefore keep that contact patch with the tarmac and they also needed that heat dissipation factor, but it looks like Michelin nailed it. Along with the tyres keeping the car stable, Bugatti also came up with a technology called laser guided ride height. That's a system that scans the road ahead and adjusts the suspension to cope with any discrepancies with the road surface to keep the car bang level so that Andy Wallace could just keep his foot pinned and sail on to that top speed. Now sadly, Bugatti's record isn't an official production car record because as you may know, to set a record you need to set a speed in one direction, turn around, set it in the other direction and then take an average. Bugatti only went in one direction to set their 304.77 miles an hour, which means they can't claim that top speed record. Now there's a reason for that. 
The Aerolessian test track has been around for decades and all the cars have been driving around it clockwise. That means the concrete has grained itself in that clockwise direction. If you turn the Bugatti around and drive it the other way around the track, you're essentially driving against the grain of the tarmac, which apparently really wears down the tyres. Now, the VW health and safety people thought that was too unsafe, they didn't know what would happen to the tyres at that speed, so they refused to drive it in the other direction. It's a shame, but at least they did it. At least they have that 304 miles an hour. Think back to the Clarkson Hammond and May Top Gear days when the Veyron came along and did 252 and then 268 miles an hour. That was crazy at the time, and yet this Shira would breeze past them. Absolutely phenomenal. Now, I won't lie, I backed Koenigsegg to reach 300 miles an hour. After the 284 mile an hour test, it seemed that with a bit more testing and a change of gear ratios, they could sail up quite easily to 300 miles an hour. Especially due to how light the Agera RS is compared to the Chiron, it seemed like it was pretty inevitable, but time waits for a no V8. Saying that, I do think Koenigsegg will sense an opportunity. 500 kilometers an hour is a nice round figure and is only a few miles an hour quicker than the Bugatti. So I reckon we'll see an Agera RS or now the Jesco sail on to that 500 kilometers an hour mark. That will make it 311 miles an hour. And if they set it in both directions, they will have the official record. Not too long ago, it was the 200 mile an hour barrier. Then it was 240, then it was 250, and now we have 300. Now Bugatti has said they won't be chasing any more speed records. And to be honest, we don't blame them. There's no shame in retiring at the top. Oh, If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and tell us in the comments what you think will be the next fastest car in the world. Will it be Hennessy? Will it be Koenigsegg? Tell us in the comments below.